Hi everybody and welcome back to the garden. It is February and I'm going to be showing you around. Now, just a little bit about this garden tour. There isn't a lot of jobs for me to do in this garden right now here in February, simply because it is pretty much a brand new garden, as you'll see from the tour. And if you've seen the previous January video, thank you for watching. This is a continuation. I will be doing one video every month throughout the whole year. So I'm going to start today's garden tour by coming through our bifold doors, which we've actually had open today because it's been really, really sunny. And as you can hear, the birds are tweeting and you can see that the sun is shining. Life is good. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I would start the tour um, looking out into the garden over here. So as you can see, we have got our patio table in a bit of an awkward spot it used to be well the first position we ever had it was up on the patio down there but then when Bo our youngest cat decided that he could stand on it to cause some mischief and jump the fence we moved it down into this corner right here um, which then he still learned that he could jump the fence so we had to put it here um, which isn't ideal but once we have made the borders completely secure then we'll be able to move it back and the plan is eventually down the bottom to have some kind of um, low level um, seating sofa outside sofa weatherproof of course over there so um, let's start with the border over here so as you can see there are some bulbs springing up now these are not bulbs that we planted these are bulbs from the old garden which have just decided to come up wherever they want to come up which is fine by us if when they come through we don't like them we can always pick them up move them give them away um, that's perfectly fine so here are the roses from my old garden now one of the jobs in february well really from january until march march will, will be your last chance to prune your roses well to give them a hard cut anyway all of my roses are david austin roses and they have all taken because they've all got little shoots on them so I pruned back all of the dead wood, most of the crossing branches or anything that I thought uh, was going to harbour them in any kind of way. So I've done all of those in the garden. You can see there are three, hopefully the same variety, because when they were moved and transported, I lost some of the labels. So when I was putting them in, I had to really try and work out what was what. And I think I've got it just about spot on. So... Um, now this is what i call it's not a long walk by any stretch of the imagination but it is a rose walk so these are all new roses all david austin um from the previous season so if we just i think this one is tottering by gently yes it's this one is tottering by gently and again i've pruned them because they were different sized bushes um so they are pretty much the same shape and size so we've gone for opposites so these two are tottering by gently the next one we have lady of shallot and as you can see they have some nice strong healthy growth already coming again i pruned them to be roughly the same size and then over here see i've got so many rows i do forget what they are this one's morning mist um and it's got a really beautiful flower and obviously the buds are coming through and we have miss molly over in the corner over there oh and we have Bo, who i think is trying to jump the fence so we do need to move those that row of cobbles okay i've just sorted out Bo, and i've just realized that i carried on with the tour and didn't press record so i'm gonna have to start i got all the way over there anyway let's start again to where i think i was so I told you all about this bench. Now this bench belonged to my grandparents who are now sadly passed away. Um, so I inherited it off them. And I did, before we went on holiday on our cruise last year in round about end of August, September, I did give it one coat of this gray wood stain. So I have a whole pot left of it. Um, I did intend to give it two or three coats, um, but that just didn't happen. I ran out of time and then it was winter. So this one coat has basically protected it enough. But as you can see, it really does need another couple of coats. So that's something that I will be doing. Um, probably not in the next couple of months. I'll wait until the nice weather. And then I'll probably 
paint this or stain it again in the summer. So if I just sit on the bench and look at the garden, um, you can see obviously that the rose walk will be really, really nice when it's all flowering. And there is another space for two more roses, which I haven't decided what they should be. They are kind of going in complementary colours, so you'll see all of that in later updates. Another thing to consider this time of the year, it's a really good month to shape your lawn or expand your borders if you need to, um, because obviously everything is quite fresh and clean and you can see where you're cutting and it gets everything ready for the new planting season so you can plant it up. I was thinking for this garden, perhaps circles, um, either one sort of big circle and then plant around it or a series of circles so that you basically increase the planting space. And I could even plant some vegetables mixed in with the flowers, um, everything being very complimentary, very cottage garden style. I think when, when we first started to design this garden, we didn't really think about having a cottage garden style. But I think that's the way it's going to evolve because we do want to attract lots of nature and wildlife into the garden. And we want to pack quite a lot into this garden. Um, it's, you know, it's not a small garden, but it's not a big garden either. It's kind of just a medium, typical sized garden. Um, quite, quite unremarkable in size and shape, really. Um, so we want to pack a lot in. It's got to be an entertaining space. We want to grow some food. We'd like to get a greenhouse in eventually we want of course some flowers it's got to be cat safe um so there's a lot to kind of pack in but you know over the evolution of the garden hopefully that will all get sorted at some point so lawns are something to consider now if you're looking back in this rose border again we're going to go very cottage style i would like some complementary uh, planting to accompany the roses so nothing that's going to overtake them and swamp them and also maybe because we have got some rambling roses again to go up the fence um, to be to form a cat block, uh, which I think would be a lot more attractive and practical for us in terms of um, how it looks. It will give us a, a very natural barrier. We have the daffodils coming up that I planted. So I planted a whole new load of mixed daffodils and they are all coming through. Again, with lots of bulbs that um, I don't even know what they are. So we will see. What they turn into also i would like in the garden to have some kind of meadow area just a small space you don't need a really big space to have a meadow um so don't think that you that you need acres to have a meadow you really don't i had a smaller one in the old garden as well and that was just fine right next we have the grasses so this grass um needs to be cut back in march in fact most grasses kind of go all deciduous like this they do need pruning in March. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of, you know, there's some regrowth coming. So I will do that next month. Um, now, this rose over here. Oh, also, I will prune back any of these dead bits. And you can see the new growth coming through. I will prune these back towards the end of this month as well. Um, this rose here, another David Austin one, it's actually Lady Emma Hamilton. I did not know what it was when I planted it in because the label was buried in the rootstock and then I kind of saw it peeking through so I pulled it out. So I think I have got that in the right place. Uh, next the hydrangea, it's kind of time to prune the hydrangea heads um, kind of in between now and March. I think I'll probably leave it till March because we haven't got a lot of regrowth on it. In fact I'm hoping that it did actually survive the winter. We will see. Um, next on my list of essential things to do, if either this month or next, is to move these slabs. Um, I'm missing out on lots of planting space, so they do need to go. They were original to the old garden. Um, I will try and reuse them where possible. Again, this base is probably roughly where the greenhouse is going to be situated, um, but it does need altering and expanding. We have roses planted to grow up this fence. Uh, which hopefully will pro provide a nice barrier. Lots of things are coming back into life. These are beautiful, pretty um, yellow flowers. Well, they will be once they're grown. Um, the bird bath has only just really defrosted after being frosty for most of the month. Now, these, these are a bargain. 
I bought these obelisks off Amazon and I paid £43 for four of them. I've only erected two and actually I haven't erected them properly because I haven't got the right screwdriver. So I've just loosely kind of, they are very loosely put together just by me screwing them with my fingers. Um, so I, th I think they're amazing and they are quite solid. Once they're tightened up, they will be really, really, really solid. Um, the idea was to put them in the garden, uh, but they're a lot bigger than what I anticipated, not in height wise, but in, in, the, in the sort of thickness of them, the circumference of them. So, um, but they're still going to work. Um, and I mean, I would love some nice stainless steel galvanized metal ones, but the ones that I've seen are very expensive. The same with the archways. Um, I do want to get some archways in. I'd love, I'd love to have some kind of pergola over that seating area. We do need to get some height into the garden. So what I thought was, um, having erected these two of them, um, I thought maybe they could go in, in some new, much larger pots either side of the bench. Uh, maybe I could plant some some new climbing roses. I did pick out provisionally, I think it's strawberry fields or strawberry something from David Austin Roses. So I think they would look quite nice there. But I need to get the right pots for it. There's Molly coming inside. Okay, plans for over here on the gravel garden. I would like some aces. Um, I think some nice aces in some pots would look quite nice there. And even maybe some herbs. Um, I really need to figure out where to put some uh, raised beds as well. I'm thinking some raised beds could go over there. Okay, and that is the February back garden for the moment. Now let's move on to the front. Okay, so I will insert some footage because I did plant um, some new primroses along this hedgerow in the front garden. So I will insert that for you now. Hi everybody and of course welcome back to the garden here in February. Um, it's really sunny today which is why I thought I would take the opportunity to come out and get some planting done. Now I was really really lucky to find some primroses in a local supermarket. Now these are really good prices. These are £1.99 for four very large I suppose in a, in a way plugs um, and the root systems look really really healthy i like the colors so i grabbed three packs now the intention is to put them plant them at the front garden hedge or under the front garden hedge and i'm not sure if that's going to be possible because the ground is very compacted not just with the soil and the earth but with the root system of the very old hedge so with the best of intentions, I am going to go and try and plant them. If it's not possible, they will have to go somewhere else, probably still in the front garden. But these are really, really, really good value. Um, if you're, in case you're wondering, they are Primrose Wanda. This is the spot that I'm going to try and plant the primroses it's right under my front hedge and we still have the pumpkins from halloween that are composting i did leave them out for the birds um, we do have lots of birds that come here in fact I, another job i need to do is refill the bird feeders but they are all rotting down which is good uh, you can see how they're crumpling up and also we have the little mini munchkin over there And there we have it. I managed to get them all in. Uh, and to be honest, the ground wasn't compacted at all. I was quite surprised. So I may try in the future and actually get some more things under this hedge. In fact, I quite like some wallflowers and to put some bulbs in as well. So that's the plan. If I just show you what I've done, you can see them all in. The next step, obviously, is to give them a good water. I tried to plant around the pumpkins but they should give a really lovely display. 
Okay, so I'm still in the front garden and the next thing that I want to do is to prune the rest of my roses that need pruning. So I've left these ones because uh, I would have done them a little bit earlier in January when I pruned some of the others. But I left them to see if they were going to come back because of course these are the roses that were moved from the old garden. I've got myself um, some new snips, so I'll be using these. I will leave them linked below. Also, I'm using a new kneeling pad as well, which I thought was going to be very hard, but actually it is quite soft. So I've got to prune all of these and then I'll be pruning the ones in the back garden as well. So I just want to show you what I'm doing. I am trying to make like a pleasing shape, almost like a round sort of ball. So as you can see, there's lots of kind of dead ends um, on the ends of these. So what I'm going to do is go down to about a third, find a spot where it's starting to sprout, about there, take my snips and then just take it away. And as you can see, the whole bush will be reduced and there will be more energy going into the new shoots rather than trying to sustain um, where it's all woody and leafy. Also, it takes away any, any old disease uh, that might be left on the old leaves. So as you can see, there is the finished pruning result. And I have been quite severe with, with it, uh, but I think that should really perk up once it starts to grow a bit more vigorously in March. Right, so now it's time to give all these roses along the rose wall the same treatment as the roses at the front and also in the border to my left. Let's get to it. I'm hoping you can see that they are a lot more evenly sized now and they are all pruned down to shoots where they're going to shoot from come March or even earlier to be honest. Okay, so that's all the roses pruned all that's left now to do is to water in these primroses. I've also just filled up my bird seed feeder. Now this is mixed seed and I don't have any of the peanuts. I've run out. And I'm trying to find somewhere that's really good value for the peanuts, but they do really, really like these seeds. So this feeder is really quite simple. It's just got uh, a lid. You just pop that on and then you just screw the little top back on, which I will do <laughs> properly once I have both of my hands free. There we go, that's not actually I've done it, there you go. All ready to hang up. And the sun begins to set for another day. Okay, they are all in the correct place. Now I've put a few more over by the base of the bird feeder, but as you can see. They are all in and that should give a really, really nice display. Probably more next year now. But I think that looks really, really good. And I really love the colour of that new variety. And <laughs> this I need to pick up because this should be on the bird feeder. But the squirrel, in fact, I saw the squirrel do it. The squirrel took it off and moved it. So I'm going to put that back on, back on the bird feeder. Okay, so moving on from the primroses, now I, again, these are roses that I did, um, I did bring from the old garden, and we do have some more bulbs poking through that I don't re really know what they are, and again, we just put this turf on top of a load of bulbs, so as you can see, lots of bulbs are coming through. Uh, here we have the pot 
it's basically the same as what I planted um, in the other two tubs at the back. I do keep this one watered because it is under a cover. And we have some nice, I think these are actually, uh, I think they're pansies. I think I put violas in the back and pansies at the front. I did also give this rose at the front of the house a really big hard trim because it was just going absolutely wild. So this one, uh, it does have some really nice coral coloured flowers on it, roses. I did also manage to prune um, this. I, I don't know if I did it at the right time. It's looking a bit crispy now, um, but it is a hardy fuchsia and it was absolutely huge um, last year. Now I'm not really seeing any signs of life on it, uh, but we'll wait and see. It is hardy after all. Maybe I did prune that a little bit too early. If everything dies in here, I'm not too bothered because I would like to get everything up and completely redo this, this bed. Maybe have a spring border. Okay, so thank you for joining me for the February garden tour. We will be back in March and I will be doing a lot more jobs. I still need to plant from seeds some sweet peas that I've got. And also there are some seeds from my Gardener's World magazine that I would like to sow. The only problem is I don't have a greenhouse at the moment. So I'm thinking about buying one of those little kind of cold frame units, uh, perhaps from Amazon. So if I do, you will see that in the March update. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give a big old thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and of course share on social media. So from me in my Shropshire garden in February, you all and goodbye.